Now that I've had a chance to be critical and review episodes one through three of Amazon's Wheel of Time adaptation, I'm gonna put my fanboy hat on for a moment. There were a couple moments that I got super excited about watching these episodes, whether it was just because of some fan service or something really cool that happened on the screen. So join me today as I tell you my top five favorite moments from the first three episodes of The Wheel of Time. All right, so let's hit the spoiler warning for this video before diving in. This video will carry a spoiler rating of red, but spoilers for episodes one through three of the Wheel of Time TV show only. There will be no book-based spoilers in this video other than what you see in the show. But if you haven't seen episodes one through three yet, watch this video at your own risk. So before starting my list, I want to preface this by saying that it is okay to have criticisms of a story and still be geeked out about it as a fan. I have plenty of criticism for the show on certain things, but I wanna talk about what I love here today. Some guidelines for comments on this video. Let people enjoy things. There are places to be critical, but if someone tells you to their face, like in a normal place, that they love something, if you're a normal human being, you wouldn't respond right back to them in person. Nah, that sucks, you're an idiot. You would be considered rude there. And it's the same on YouTube comments. So be nice to each other. If someone says they love something in the comments, don't be an ass. Let's just make that the rule. Don't be an ass. Anyways, let's geek out about the things that we love. So coming in at number five on my list, we have two dream sequences. Yes, I know this isn't one event, but I had to include them both. I wasn't sure these were even gonna make it into the show, but the fact that they not only did, but were done so well was awesome to me. They bring horror elements to the show, which I love, and both of them were actually really scary. I also love that there is essentially no explanation yet for the figure with the red eyes, and I love that also. I'm hoping that we see more of these going forward and we get to learn a bit more about dreams and their power in the world of the Wheel of Time. Without getting into any spoilers, Dreaming is an important part of the Wheel of Time, so I'm happy that they are including it at this point in the story, and it looks really good so far. I liked the first dream sequence with Rand because I wasn't expecting it, especially how it ended. But while watching it at the premiere, I actually like yelled at the screen in excitement and people were screaming in the theater. They were scared by it, which was awesome. Now I included the second dream sequence though because of how much scarier it was than the first one and there's a ton of symbology in it. We'll have to break that one down another time, but I love how there are Easter eggs all over this story so far. Coming in at number four was a scene from the Winter Night sequence that I just got all fired up about when I saw it the first time. It's short and most people probably didn't think much of it, but I absolutely loved it. And the scene I'm talking about is when Days Conger, played by Mandy Simmons, basically yells, come get some to a Trollic, and then her and a bunch of other women's kick its ass with a pitchfork. You want a real feast? Come and get some of this. Why did I like this scene? Well, it's so indicative of how people from the Two Rivers are portrayed, and ultimately, people from Manetherin. As Maureen says in her story about Manetherin, the women came and fought the Trollocs side by side with their husbands. I just love that they fought back in the Winter Night scene rather than just hiding the whole time. Yeah, they didn't even know what they were fighting against, but this is exactly what someone from the Two Rivers would have done. And I'm a huge fan of the way Mandy Simmons has played Days Conger so far. I want more of her. Can we get a spinoff series following Days Conger? I, I would watch it. Didn't you just cover Winter Night Nameless? Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean the rest of it wasn't awesome either. Despite my issues with some of the pacing in the first episode, I loved the battle itself. It was well choreographed, and I love how absolutely brutal this was. People were being eaten alive, people were dying right and left, a dude got decapitated, buildings are burning, and Moraine's decides to tear down the Wine Spring Inn, all of which was awesome. I love that we saw the battle before Moraine shows up, and then we saw the battle after she shows up. She takes basically all the Trollocs down, and even though she's injured in the process, it is firmly established in this episode that Moraine, like Days Conger, is a complete badass. During the fight, Moraine and Lan are all synced up so well, and it's so obvious they have a bond of some kind. She's always ducking underneath his sword, or she's throwing the equivalent of flashbangs out there so that she can distract Trollocs and then Lan can kill them. And of course, she throws fireballs and calls down lightning and throws buildings at Trollocs. I thought the Trollocs looked really good 
And I love the practical effects and how they use CGI to enhance some of them. I thought that was actually a pretty good strength. The fact that this battle was actually so bloody and impactful is a positive for the show for me. It really established how awful the Shadow Spawn are, and they make Trollocs out to be actually formidable rather than basically cannon fodder. Number two for me was the introduction of Tom Marilyn. This was absolutely a change from how he's introduced in the books, as he comes into the story much later here in the show, but I think this change and the way they did this was absolutely better than the way it's done in the books. This version of Tom is grittier, but keeps his worldliness and plays the role of mentor to Matt and Rand. I love that Alexandra Willem, the actor who plays Tom, can sing and play guitar, and the song he does is great. I won't spoil what the lyrics are about, I'll let you ponder over that a little bit for now, but let's just say that he is singing about a major lore character that will become important as the series goes on. Tom's conversations and interactions with Matt are outstanding, and I loved the dynamic between the two of them. Tom stole basically every scene that he was in. I officially want more Tom Marilyn, and I'm excited to see what we get this week in episode four. Lastly, coming in at number one on the list, we have the big reveal that Dana isn't simply just a barkeep in a small mining town, but she is actually a follower of the Dark One, called a Dark Friend. I'll admit I should have seen this one coming, but it was so well written and so well acted that I missed it and it completely surprised me. That line from Azuka Hoyle where she says, was it the braid? Was like, oh shit, she's a Dark Friend. <laughs> This was such a well done combination of a couple elements from the books that we thought they'd have to cut or combine, and they just executed it so well that I was very, very happy it turned out the way it did. Having Tom take her out and explain to the boys how awful a dark friend is was also great. They aren't at a place yet as characters where they're going to be willing to do that, but you get the feeling that they are learning. This is the first time in the show that the boys really felt like fish out of water to me, which is a great sign, something from the books that I think we've been missing. So anyways, those were my top five moments from the first three episodes. What were your top five? Let me know in the comments of the video if yours were different than mine. And also before we go, I want to again remind everybody that ticketing is open for WatCon and that they are going fast. WatCon is a Wheel of Time focused convention that we are hosting here in Columbus, Ohio, July 8th through the 10th of 2022. This is a Wheel of Time only fan convention that is focused on fans of both the books and the TV show. It's going to feature over 30 of your favorite YouTube creators, podcasters, Huge fans. Matt Hatch from The Dusty Wheel will serve as the MC for the main event from the stage, as well as Daniel Green will be a guest of honor along with Kate Redding and Michael Kramer, who are the voice narrators for the Wheel of Time audiobooks. There is also another special guest, too, that I will be able to announce soon that I know you all will want to meet. Just head over to www.watcon.com and reserve your ticket and your room block. They are going fast and tickets are limited this year. I do not want you to miss out. This will be a blast. Make sure also like the video, subscribe to the channel to be updated when I get more Wheel of Time content out. That's what I do here. There's more coming probably tomorrow. So anyways, thanks everybody for watching and until next time, peace out.